for me what safe spaces for women online would mean is that women are able to express themselves they are able to be authentic without feeling like you know i have to to wear a certain face or a certain mask for me to be here so that i can get acceptance women should be able to speak their minds freely they should be able to run to those spaces when they are in danger outside and get help from those spaces that is what safe space means for me as a woman and as a woman i would want i would want to to feel like i also belong that it's not my male counterparts who get more attention and more presence on those spaces than i do we need to fight for uh, for safe spaces online for women because you know we've always had these talks we've always seen men talk about how they are complete with women how women are running their families well how women are just um you know um are trying to to help the society and i feel like we should just allow women uh, be the same way we are trying to say you know we respect a man online or even offline is the same thing we should try and also fight for um for for women because when you when you're trying to disguise people and you know even if today we just get out of the internet and leave the internet for men only it's going to be boring it is important for for there to be safe spaces for women online because um, traditionally uh, societies have marginalized women so I, I usually look at the online spaces as a blessing because initially we thought this, this is where we could be free, you know, someone is not going to come and touch you on Twitter, someone is not going to rape you on Twitter, um, but it turns out the bullying that goes on in digital spaces is actually just um, psychological abuse you know there's physical abuse that you can show the scars for but then this is psychological abuse and you can't prove it because it's something that goes on within you so it becomes very hard for someone who's been harassed online to even make a police case about it because how, how do you prove you were harassed Someone else will go and say, I was just exercising my freedom of expression, you know. I love, I love that there are mechanisms where you can report, like if someone is trolling you or if someone is, you, you can always block. I, I like that that is there. You can block, you can report and you can. But then on a social level, I think that more men need to listen. Like men need to understand their privilege, their, their patriarchal privilege online and just listen. Sometimes we have these things called uh, Twitter spaces where you will find women are just talking, we are venting, women are talking about motherhood, women are talking about various things, and a man will hoop on and, and make it about themselves, and it's like, no, if you'd have walked into this space to listen, just listen. I think men don't speak enough, <laughs> such that the little women speak sounds like a lot. Because now, let me go back to the reference of gender-based violence. The only time men speak up is when women are ranting about something that happened to one of them. And then they say, you guys don't care about men, but men don't care about men. And they never uh, rant, they never have hashtags for men until it's about a woman. It's like being a woman in, in an African society. You don't have the luxury to just chill and act like patriarchy is a cool thing. Patriarchy is not a cool thing. Patriarchy oppresses you every day you wake up. And so you don't, you can't afford the luxury to just chill and be like, you know, Mimi, I can drive my Range Rover. I live in Kilimani. My life is set. I'm cool. We all don't have that luxury. You know, with online space, it's your own private space. You can control but wakati watu wanakuja ku attack wao wanajiza kama ina space yangu privately na watu wanani attack then huku nje radia physical security yangu iko aje cuz hiyo ina ina ina, ina iku deprive ina ina inaingia na issues za digital security ya yeah? we definitely need to have a conversation about creating the online spaces and then go ahead and implement it i think one problem with Kenyans at large is we forget so easily. So we will have a brilliant conversation 
today about online spaces and tomorrow we've forgotten that we had a conversation. So we need to have that conversation most importantly to create that awareness. I, I usually make videos um, to highlight, you know, if a public servant is not being accountable and they need to be accountable or something. So I, I usually call out someone. So an instance where um, I was actually harassed is because I had made a video and I was shaming our president. And I strongly believed he needed to be shamed because he goes against everything that the constitution mandates him to be as a president. The way his regime has run this country has been very disappointing, if not shameful. Uh, so I shamed him, I called him out because I felt like, you know, if there's no one who's gonna tell the king he's mad, I'll be the one to do it. And he has his own supporters. And they, they really, really came for me. Um, I, I was body shamed. I was called names. Um, I was told that I needed a husband because I am too much. Uh, everything I talked about wasn't viewed as something that's um, needing public accountability. It was viewed from a very personal perspective. I, I don't know the president personally, um, if I talk about the president, I use a scorecard to rate him. So I'll go like, correction, he gets an E, this, he gets an E, that, he gets an public accountability, he gets an E. I mean, we're still waiting for his explanation for the Pandora Papers. We are still waiting for that. So accountability is zero. And so from that scorecard, I'll then go like, that's a failed leadership. Not personally a failed man, as the president, but that's a failed leadership. His office has failed. And um, online spaces don't tend to look at that perspective. So it, it very, very fast became very personal about him as a man and me as a woman. And um, I actually took some time off from social media after that because it's a lot. When you have like uh, 50 people all telling you negative things. We are human beings and external validation is something that contributes to our, our confidence and personas. So when you have 50 people telling you negative things, you know, you go like, oh. When I was getting um, appointed at the National Secretariat of the Kano Party, of course, again, like I said, the people who are not happy. And um, I remember last year when we were um, in the COVID period, we because most people were at home and so they were very idle and um there was a story about how um my colleagues and myself all women by the way uh we had been matched with certain people and we were there was a rumor that you know some of our bosses had taken a chopper and taken us to some very funny island and i remember asking uh, one of them ah yeah is it that I have a twin who looks like me that I don't know because I have not stepped out of this house ever since? And it was growing and there were new things every day. And even people who knew why and how I got to my position, what I'm capable of, would be like, ah, today I saw the Slay Queen online, she didn't respond. And fine, eventually when we moved to the office, they would still be like, and mind you, I'm not responding because again, I have just gotten this job and I can't risk losing it. And so they would be like, so today I've just seen the Slay Queen, you know, they're out there, they're just eating. And then so even just coughing was an issue. But because I had um, not seen someone else go through that experience per se, I probably didn't know the best way to go about it. For me, I chose silence but not because silence has always been my go-to way of, of defending. It has actually never been my go-to way of defending myself or, or dealing with bullies. I chose it because I didn't know what to do. Yeah, I've had online bullying in relation to my work and even outside uh, in something that's not related to activism. But I'd say in, related, in relation to activism, 
I get that a lot on Facebook. And uh, you know, I, I don't know but if it's my following or, or it's everywhere because people believe that women should not talk about politics. Myself, I try to attach politics and conservation because right now climate change is attached to everything. There's climate change and gender, climate change and food production, climate change and politics. So sometimes when I try and talk about politics, where you're trying to push leaders to also do something about our climate crisis, I'll always get comments, uh, a lot of them from men, not, not that I hate men, but uh, a lot of them from men saying that, you know, you're talking about politics because, you know, the things they say about women, when women talk about politics, it's always about being a flower girl. Uh, they will look at it as um, this girl is getting favors from so and so, or maybe some some maybe a political leader chooses to support my conservation work, and maybe they'll share it online. And people will always attach to that's a flower girl, that that one, you know, all those kind of discussions around it. Yeah, and I get that almost every day, but we just used to it. I think one significant one that made me exist the way I exist currently online was in 2010. So I had just cleared high school in 2009, and then um, I was just going about my business in, 20, in 2010 on social media. But I like posting pictures, yeah? And so I'm the kind of person, I find good, sun, good sunlight, I take pictures. I find a good camera, I take pictures. I love, like, I love taking pictures. And so I would take pictures and post on social media. But one afternoon, in 2010, a friend of mine wrote me a direct message on Facebook and they were like, have you seen your pictures? Your pictures are going around. And then I was like, the whole concept of social media, if you share it, you kind of don't have control over it. And then they're like, that's not what I meant. I meant someone has taken your pictures and somehow um, the pictures have your face, but they have naked bodies. And so that happened and my pictures were making rounds. And apparently the story around it was that, oh, be careful of this lady she sends nudes and then asks you for money and all that kind of stuff and then of course i had just come from high school i was young i was a little girl right so i was scared and and, and it was really scared and it is really wrong that things like that are happening to people right uh but i remember from that time i i deactivated not i deactivated i deleted my facebook account never to go back to it again i deleted of course if you delete the account it goes entirely with everything so I deleted it and for a while I had to stay without being on social media because of the fear. And it was a lot for me. It was a lot because from my timeline, you could see all the faces that have been used are mine because it's my pictures, but the body is not mine. And I can see that, but you see the rest of the world doesn't know that because not everyone has seen your body. So nobody, nobody is going to think that's not you. And these people who sit, you know, behind keyboards and try to, to you know, Photoshop and do all these things that they do with people, pictures and everything. They have time, you know, bullies and trolls and all these people, they have time, that's the thing. And so that happened and it was really bad, but it really informed the kind of person I've become. So I recreate videos apart from digital activism and content creation. I actually create parliament videos, especially from South Africa, but I also do Kenyan uh, parliament videos. And so there's this one time I was recreating a video and after pre recreated and posted and everything is when the fact actually came out that it was actually a doctored, um, it was a doctored video. But I, I, well, I, I still would have done it because the doctored video sounded more interesting than the, than the original. But it came with, I saw a lot of comments of, people who felt like I did that on purpose and I just I was I I, I had to ignore because I couldn't respond to all those comments. There's actually another time also that I did a video uh, about Somali okay Somaliland. I hope they don't get to see this because it will be a whole other debate. Um, but and that was also uh, received with so much uh, backlash because there's the debate is still going on whether Somaliland is actually a country. And um, that was another defining moment for me where I had to look at that and realize that not everyone will understand what you're doing online and I don't have to take anything personally. You know what, I'm almost a near sequel from Tandao. I'm going to experience this experience. 
na ikani leads to a point even I had to leave out of this country for security reasons na unajuliza kama maswali mingi cuz when you say activism also unatumia pia online to mobilize as much as ndio na believe kama community organizer to mobilize from a traditional way ya watu to come to meet kuzungumza that's more powerful I don't know if politicians are preferring you as much as online. Um, you can appear what you are turned down and shift narrative, but physical, the traditional way, you can meet what it's more powerful. But what you know, you look online, you already enjoy your power within the traditional way you are organized. You can send in a breaking in to Kabisa. That's why one, me need choosing notifications to come on a fatilia. What are bongi angu di na wele? Iyo kufatilia juu na ngalivu tuzi na kuaffect. Unapata kuna msema ongea kitu inakuuma una tukana emotions na tukana feelings eh unasikia kurusha maneno kwa sababu pia as much as you have your freedom to kuji express pia mimi niko na freedom yangu na rights zangu pia na nafasi kwa protect una rights pia wewe kuni abuse so when you publicly identify as a feminist number one, like online especially on twitter uh, it's like you put a target on your own back because everything you say someone will always be somewhere in your comments talking about how you're a toxic bitter feminist they will always come for you or if something happens to a man for example a man has been beaten and a man has been assaulted someone will drag you into the situation asking why are you silent about this thing so and most of the time when when um, whenever a woman is occupying any any sort of space and and having an opinion and an opinion that someone disagrees with then sexists and patriarchs will always find a problem with that with a woman occupying space and with a woman having an opinion so a lot of the time it's not um they don't even come for you for what you've actually said a lot of the times if you read into it it's how they are you who do you think you are what makes you think that you are the kind of person who can have an opinion like who do you who do you think you are bona jonanga nani sana by the way you think you can just come here and tell us things as if as if as if so there's that uh, like they just they get rubbed off because you're a woman occupying space and with an opinion and an opinion that is is a bold opinion it's like women are not supposed to occupy space or to have opinions we're supposed to all agree hold hands sing kumbaya agree with one another complement each other but sometimes you're you're on the wrong and i will call you out for it so when you feel like you've been called out for it and then you realize it's a woman calling you out and she's a feminist it's like allah who do you think you are so that is where i i feel like most of the trolling comes from especially uh, you know on twitter that that incident did actually shape my presence online nowadays because um i i think back then um, I, al I also wasn't open to different perspectives of people's opinions. And um, after that incident, I, I realized we might all be suffering as a country because of that administration, but then we are not all seeing it from the same perspective. You know, we all have our own different ways of, of seeing it. And everyone's opinion is, is valid. We are all entitled to one. So yeah, nowadays I'm, I'm more careful with my words online and um, I, I tend to look at every negative thing that comes my way as criticism that I can either learn from or just put aside and, and move on. I would, I, would, I, would, I would avoid any side shows. If I'm, if I'm on this space because of business, if I'm on this space because of influencing, I would stick to business. By sticking to business is don't be caught. Don't it, it, I mean we are human and it's hard to avoid sometimes. But just don't be caught in in some compromising situations. Don't be caught in some compromising shows and and maybe you yourself do not post compromising content. If you if you want us to take you seriously, then stick to stick to what you're supposed to do. I know I I, I won't mention names, but uh, I know of women who. No matter what you say, no matter what you want to to drag them into, they will never allow you to do that. They will stick to business. If their job is to to market clothes, every day they'll make sure that what they post is about that. And even if it's not about that, but it is something relevant, something that something that at least is is catchy in a, in a business or in a professional way. And because of that, you stay professional. You get respected. Everyone will not respect you, but even your, your the bullies will, will get tired. 
or if they don't get tired, they'll just know that this is not someone to play with. I become the kind of person who, it's not because I don't care, but really I don't care on social media. And my I don't care doesn't come from a point of I don't care really. It comes from a point of, before I post something, I've already thought of where could it possibly reach? How could it possibly affect me? Uh, what are the things I stand a chance to lose just because of these pictures that I've posted. But also, how much do I gain as an individual? Because for me, that is the most important thing. As an individual, and also as you know, a collective in terms of communities that I work with. And for me, that is very, very important. And so, over time from there, short, of course, shortly after I started another account still in 2010, and I've had that account since, and it has transitioned. It has transitioned from an account of a young girl who was scared about you know their pictures being misused on social media to a girl to a young woman to a young person that now understands that social media is like my my red carpet it's like my runway i'm the one who has power over it um but i think that's helped because nowadays i have it's also helped in managing my my temper because before even that incident of course i'd always get those random messages of people hating on the comment section, it's normal. And I used to get angry and comment really um, with so much anger. But after that story and all those issues, nowadays I'm so calm. I get a, I get a very tough maybe comment, and I'm just like it's okay. Or I just laugh I laugh about it, or I delete the comment. My best approach, uh, number one, I believe in chaos. If you come for me with fire, best believe if I have time, I will return the fire for you. If you come at me and insult me, most times I will clap back. And, and sometimes if I'm not able to clap back or if I'm not in a mental space, you know, because when you're clapping back, it means that you're now entertaining this, this thing. So sometimes you don't have the mental space for it and I will block. Other times I don't have to fight my own battles. I will, I will come back to the, you know, to, to the thing I said that I was being trolled about and I, and I find that people have fought on my behalf. So it helps to have a community. It helps to have an online community where if one of you is attacked, then someone else can come in and fight on your behalf or clap back on your behalf. And it's the same thing I do even for my for members of my community. If I see that someone is being attacked, most times I will also jump in and say something to make sure that the person who's attacking this other person knows that this person has people. So there are people you, do, you, you don't just come for, the, the members of my community online that you don't just come for, we will, we will pounce on you as a community. Or sometimes I will come for you, me, myself, and I will ask you questions that will just, you know, embarrass you. Or sometimes I will just block. Yes, but then also, there are also instances where someone has trolled you and you, and you take note of the troll. But also, the subject of the troll is, is an opportunity for you to do like an education kind of thing. So I might ignore that I've been trolled, but I will also look at it like an education moment. So you say, I, 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 I take note of the insult, but let me also say something about this thing that you have said. So now it becomes an education opportunity. It was basically the only way I could both control the narrative and still maintain my job. But if I had seen stories or documentaries of people like you're saying that have put together and said, this is how I succeeded, this is how I grew myself politically, using social media like now how obama has been one of the people who have greatly used the social media to take themselves president nana of ghana has been one of the people also who really used you know social media to campaign so now i know how to campaign social media but i don't know how to use how to defend cyber myself from cyber bullies you know because i have not seen it from someone i am actually learning as we go i am learning through my experiences and i don't think i would want that for anybody else What if I got on this space because of my lifestyle? What if I got on this space because of telling you guys where I live, where I move, what I wear, what I eat every day? Because we have such influencers, we have the people in those spaces. And then there's someone else who got here because they're fighting for human rights. There's someone who got here because they started a foundation for, for young women, for girls. So um, the person who got here because of their lifestyle will definitely want to will definitely want to know more about it right so it means for them they've they've opened their lives to us they've opened their lives to us such that every day we wake up and we know that so and so will post for us their bed so and so will tell us they moved to a new neighborhood so and so is going to visit their parents in this place you've opened it to us and so you should be ready for us to either 
talk positively or when we see a negative thing we will talk about it for us you've de- you've decided that what we see is what we are going to get and we are going to talk about it there is also let me I, 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 I don't know um i don't mean to be vulgar but we even have people who tell us how they engage sexually online and for me once you've opened that door then let them in don't open it and then you say no i didn't mean you go that far you you've opened the door so let them go in but for you if you want to but for somebody somebody else who's here for a different purpose like for them they are they are here to to do the, the this foundation and and other things and they want their lives to remain private then let it remain private when it comes to privacy online it's important to focus on data laws first and um we have community guidelines on on this digital spaces so those are some things that you'd want to be a bit informed on before you set up a digital space um at times it's it's easy to overshare online um because you know we we are the millennials and um our parents were not they were the analog generation so that generational gap has meant that a lot of us haven't had um a close relationship with our parents we don't feel like our parents are a safe space where if a boy has broken my heart i can then go and cry about it to my mom uh because that's not how we were brought up or maybe that's not the environment which we were brought up i'm not speaking for myself i have a very good relationship with my mother and it's a privilege but a lot of of us do not have that relationship with their parents so we run to the digital space because uh it it kind of gives you some comfort when you post something and other people relate to it it gives you a bit of comfort and you feel like it's a safe space people can't really know what they don't know or something or something so sometimes i feel like i just need to make people online know to have so much information that i know is not necessary for them to have especially uh, concerning my private life because the moment you just you parade it online is online and I, i think that's not that's not going to change soon as much as we want it to change it's going to take us a long time before we get there the c and b in the online space i know most of the time we are told you've decided to have a social media account so you it means you don't want to be private which is not necessarily true but for us in the political space we are in our own rights public figures so it's then very difficult to maintain um privacy however i think we need to have the conversation where we say you know you can have your you can be your public figure and still keep certain aspects of your life private stop being the problem let's at least try being the solution